All right, advanced math. Going to go back to something we did in sixth grade and ramp it up to a seventh grade level today. That is using variables to represent unknown values. All right, so uh, give this as your next title. And after you have done that, turn the page and go along with me. Okay, so let's go back to like the simple sixth grade kind of problem where we did this. When we very first learned how to um, use variables, we would do problems like this. Uh, 100 jelly beans in a bag. If Randy eats some of them, there are 62 left for his brother. Write an equation that shows how many Randy ate. So here, the unknown value is how many Randy ate. Maybe we'll make that be R. And there was no problem. I mean, really, you don't even need a variable to solve this. You can say there's 100, 62 left. You know in your head 100 minus 62 is 38. So he ate 30, 38 jelly beans. And... And that's fine. Like solving this with common sense is okay. So remember the my question here is write an equation that shows how many. And there was a common wrong thing to do. And I want to remind you of that because it's a tricky thing not to do. So often what I would what I would tell you was like I didn't like instead of writing 100 minus 62 is 38, all you guys would just write 160 minus 600 minus 62 equals r. And because that's how you calculate R, but it's not how you show the situation is always what I said. This is how you find R. And I would say really what I want you to do is write an equation that shows how many in the situation. And so I would say like really a better example would be 100. What we know in the problem is 100. Then he ate some and there were 62 left. So this one shows that how you show the situation. This one just showed you how to find R, find the answer. And so a lot of times I would favor this one, even though it's not how you solved it, it was really what showed you the situation. And so I wanna focus on problems like that today. We're gonna to really just be showing how to create a situation more than trying to write it an equation to solve it. This won't be as hard to do because the ones I'm going to show you today are not as easy to solve and it's easy to do this when you can do it in your head when it's a when it's a duh kind of problem. Today they're not really going to be duh. Okay that's enough of that. So here we go. So here's an example of a new sign of seventh grade problem. Put your pencil down. This is just to listen to and concentrate I do. So the walls of a square room need painting. Each of the four walls are 12 feet wide by eight and a half feet tall. One gallon of paint covers 75 square feet. Write an equation that can be used to find how much paint you'll need and then find the amount. I'm not even that worried today about finding the amount. Well, we probably will. But the main thing I want you to do is just be able to use variables and the information to write an equation that shows the situation. So let's talk about what we know. It's going to take some drawing and some thinking. This is really like problem solving and not a fast thing to do. All right, so I've got these walls. Um, they are longer than they are wide. So maybe they kind of look like this. They are 12 feet wide by 8 and a half feet tall. And I have four of those, four of them. And I've got to paint them. And one gallon of paint covers 75 square feet. Um, so I guess when I say how much paint you'll need, I mean how many buckets of paint will you need. So this is a, oh, it's really sloppy, I'm sorry. How many buckets will you need? So I guess what I first need to do, this is square feet, so this is talking about area I see in that problem. So I need to know how much area do I have to paint. Right? And so that I can calculate. Um, I'm going to need, so one, it's a rectangular wall, so the area is going to be the, le the length times the width or the base times the height, which is going to be 8.5 times 12. Let me do that real quick. 
So it looks like the area of a wall is 102 square feet. And I have four of those. So really times four of those is going to be 400 and eight square feet to paint. So I have to get to 75 square feet uh, per bucket and 408 total square feet that I need to paint. All right, so if I have 408 square feet to paint and I have 75 square feet per bucket. I guess my unknown is how many buckets do I need. Um, I hate using B as a variable because they look like sixes, but I'll use one anyway. So I'm going to call that B, and I'll just try to make sure it doesn't look like a six too much. Um, so what I would have to do in this situation, I want to see, you know, how much paint I use is going to be 75 square feet times B, right? If I bought one bucket, I would have 75. If I bought two buckets, 150. If I bought three buckets, 225 and stuff like that. So I need to find out how many buckets I would need. And in order to do that, I guess I need to divide 408 that I have to paint into groups of 75. So my 408 um, square feet I need to paint, divide that into groups or buckets of 75, and that should give me the number of buckets I need. So that's how I'd solve that. If you really, that's how I would express it, and you can calculate that real fast. Um, if you wanted even really to do that with less work, it would also even be okay if instead of calculating all this, you worked it into the problem if you said, okay, well, I'm going to need eight and a half times uh, 12, that's the area of a wall, times four, because there's four walls, and divide all that by 75. That'd be okay, too. I don't really, when you're writing an equation, it's okay if you don't solve this to 4 or 8, or if you do. This is probably simpler to deal with. But it's a pretty good example. Okay, so that's like a more complicated situation to represent with a variable. Um, but hopefully that helps you think through how the unknowns and the parts work together. Let's do an even more complicated one together next. Open your notebook up, and we're going to do this one together. This is sort of like one of these famous algebra math problems. Okay. So you kind of have to even just understand what the situation is first, which takes a second. So it says the wall in the living room is 11 feet. Uh, I guess 11 feet kind of long. You want to hang a shelf in the direct center of the wall that is 2 feet and 6 inches wide, or 2 and a half feet wide, right in the middle of that 11 foot wall. Write an equation that can be used to find out how far from the wall to hang the shelf. How far from the wall to hang the shelf? That's what I want to find out. How far from the wall do I hang the shelf? That is my unknown value. Um, and so why don't we, that's going to be a distance in feet. Why don't we do F? F is always a good variable. It doesn't look like any number. So how far or how many feet from the wall am I going to hang? That's my unknown. That's what I don't know. So this is a weird problem, and it, it it's... If you don't really pay attention to the situation, it can be harder um, to solve, or it can be easy to think it's simpler to solve than it is. So you want to pause and take a minute um, and help yourself figure out what's even going on, rather than just waiting on me to do it. Please do, and then you can unpause and see if it matches, um, but or you can just work along with me as I do it. So let's talk about what's happening here, right? So Matt, we've got this like 11 foot wall. And you want to hang this two foot six inch shelf right in the middle. So like right here. So that it's perfectly in the middle. And it's the same distance from this wall and from this wall. That's how I read in the middle to be. And so my question is this. How far from the wall is the shelf? 
So if I'm looking at the whole situation, this is that distance I don't know. This is F feet, and this is F feet. I don't know how far from the wall it is on either side, but I do know how long the shelf is. So really, if I do this, the distance from the shelf to the wall, plus the two and a half feet, plus the distance from the shelf to the wall again, that should all add up to my 11 feet. So that's the situation. It's a little trickier to, if you don't draw it, it's a little trickier to set up than it seems like it should be. I think once you have a good drawing, it's not too hard to figure out. I think you could look at that now, and without knowing any algebra skills, you could use common sense, and you could figure out what that F distance was. But make sure you remember, the, the problem says write an equation that can be used. So let's find the situation. So what I just told you is how I would think of it. I would say, if I look at this, what I know is that F plus 2.5 plus F equals 11. However many feet that is, plus 2.5 plus how many feet that is equals 11 feet. That's my equation that uses my unknown values, I think, to represent the situation, and now I have to figure out what F is. So the big first step is that. Now, if you want to simplify that, you could. We've talked about like terms. It's been about a week, but we did. You'll notice I have two like terms here. I've got two Fs. So if you wanted to further simplify that, you could combine your two like terms and say it's 2F plus 2.5 equals 11, that would be okay too. Um, this is simplified. This is not. But they're both the same thing. They both tell you the same information. So, you know, if I were to look at this, I would say, okay, well, let me, the way I would figure it out is I would say, okay, I've got this 11 feet. Two and a half of it is shelf, so I'm going to take that away. And I'm left with eight and a half feet for the F and the other F. So after I kind of deal with that, I know that F plus F equals eight and a half. And I feel like I can figure out that that's, each F is going to be half of that. So I could divide it by two. And I would hang it for and a fourth feet um, from the wall. So that's how I'd solve it. Just common sense, really. The harder part's making the equation. Um, but if I'd check that now, if this was 4 and 25 hundredths, and this was 4 and 25 hundredths, if I now use my equation, add them up, F plus the shelf plus the other F, I should get 11. And I do. So this is using variables to represent an unknown value in the situation. Okay, so hopefully we can do some more problems like that in the future. Um, make sure you've really written this one down well. This is a famous problem that I feel you're likely to see again. This, the shelf in the middle of the wall. Famous math problem, so I really want you to have a good understanding of it. If you're going to go back and watch either example again, I will just do this one. This is the one that I think is a great example of algebra and a great one for you to totally understand. All right, that is it, and I will see you tomorrow.